ever since my first video this year, I've been saying that AI agents will become huge this year, primarily because you know, everything that we did in generative AI, what we effectively did is one or the other task. So let's say you either wrote code, you either wrote blog and a bunch of other things. But all of these were single tasks in isolation. What you would typically have to do once you write these tasks is, you know, go to a website where you would upload the blog or go to your IDE to paste the code and run the code, debug the code, fix the code and so on. This is the year when agents will come in, which will do everything from writing to testing to deploying it. It is apparent from this AI software engineer Devin that can write code from mere prompts and also deploy these pieces of code. You can also see figure one which was recently announced. It's a robotic company bringing a general purpose humanoid robot. It's almost like an agent that knows how to do things end to end. There are certain open source platforms where you can build your own agents. And I have a link to how you can get started with AI agents in the description. Autogen is another sample and this is by Microsoft. And Google just announced their generalist AI agent SEMA today, which is an agent for 3D virtual environment. In a nutshell, it can go inside of video games and automatically play these video games and learn from the video games, which it can then implement in real life. Sounds crazy. But it's very simple, right? So if you are training an AI in real world to do certain tasks, then it's going to take, you know, X amount of time in order to do that. In video games, however, you can train AI with limitless speed as long as you obviously have computing. So the time inside the video game versus the time relative to real life, an agent can learn way more faster. So the name of the agent is Scalable Instructable Multi-World Agent that can follow natural language instructions to carry out tasks in a variety of video game setting. And I think they tested this out across nine video games. And the most popular of all the video games is obviously, mm, wait for it, wait for it, the goat simulator, right? So the agent was able to turn or turn itself into a goat and explore the environment. You can see there are some of the popular titles here as well. There is No Man's Sky, which is very popular. There is Valheim, which is again a popular game. And obviously Goat Simulator, right? So Google trained their AI to learn how to play Goat Simulator and a bunch of other video games. So they apparently had done some early work with Atari games in 2015 that says human level control through deep reinforcement learning and their own work in 2019 on AlphaStar where they trained a Grandmaster level StarCraft II multi-agent reinforcement learning agent. Both of these taking into, they built SEMA taking both of these into consideration. And now they're shifting their focus from individual games towards a general instructable game playing AI agent. And I'm going to tell you some of the very cool facts from, you know, the basic report that you see here. And I'm also going to tell you a little bit about the technical paper as well. What is most exciting about this agent is that the accuracy or the final performance of the agent that is trained on eight games versus an agent that is trained on only the ninth game is not very different. So basically the agent that has learned all the eight games can easily explore and play the ninth game, which it hasn't trained on, which is why it's called generalizable agent. While the agent who's only been trained on ninth game is as good as the agent who's learned the eight games, but not the ninth game. I hope I'm making sense here. While the performance is not as exact as the agent that is specialized on the ninth game or on the ninth game, but it's very close or very nearly matched with the agent that has learned the previous eight. Now, obviously, in, for this agent to do well, natural language processing is very, very important because this is not an agent that will be plugged inside the code of a game. Rather, this agent will be playing the game just like you and me. So he'll just log into the game and then it will operate via the natural instruction that the person is giving to the agent. Like I mentioned, because it can learn from the eighth game and perform similar to the agent that has only been trained on ninth game, it's highly generalizable, which is promising for not just AI systems, but AGI. Currently, um, I think SEMA was trained over 600. Yeah, it was trained on 600 basic skills, which include things like navigation, object interactions, menu use, open the map and so on. And these are the tasks that you can perform in about like 10 seconds. You can see drive the car is first task, jump the fence in the code simulator and also drive the car in the code simulator. And then there's this is satisfactory where pick up an iron ore, open the hub terminal, find water in Valheim, 
and then chop down trees in one time. It also means that there's no man's sky in, you know, instructions like go to spaceship and then shoot the asteroid. You know, looking at all of this, most of these games that you see here are farming based games. The satisfactory I've not played, but the last three I have, or I mean the other three I have, and all of these are farming based games. So I'm wondering if people who are aware of how Sigma works and if they're able to get access to Sigma, they can exploit these video games by, you know, just setting up the agent and doing auto farm. So this kind of theory is not new, by the way, in video games. Generally, what uh, these players would do is they would set up bots that would auto farm things for them. Like, for example, cutting and collecting trees or collecting ores, minerals and so on and so forth. So the thing is, this is not new. But what is new in Sima is that it can also do new things and it can accept voice commands that will obviously be translated into text and then fed to the model. It could also mean, you know, good for people who can't use things like controllers for whatever reason. And then, you know, they can give voice commands to the agent and then agent can perform tasks for them. Now, while this is gaming, look at the applications of this in real life. So let's say if scientists want to explore a deep cave somewhere, they can basically put this agent inside of a rover and then give voice commands to explore the cave. Or the rover can automatically learn to explore the cave based on what it learns through the video game. So you can see here, there is an example of SEMA agent that has been trained on all environments. And the relative performance when it comes to a specialized agent is higher for the agent that is trained on all environments. And then the agent that has been not trained on that game, the difference with respect to the specialized agent. So specialized agent is someone who's been trained on that game versus SEMA's generalized agent that is not trained on that game is not very different. While same for the scenario where there is no given language, given no language, the difference is quite a bit. You can see they've evaluated SEMA's ability to follow instructions to complete nearly 1500 unique tasks, in part using human judges. And then this is the comparison they've made so far based on that. So finally, how does this all work, right? So on the left side, you would see it, it has the component of environment. So overall, it has like four components. There is the environment, the data, the agent that is processing the data, and then the evaluation step. So the environment is basically video games. Let's say in the scenario, Valheim or whatever that is mentioned here, it collects data from the actual data set. So if you've played No Man's Sky before, you would see YouTube videos with respect to what is going on. And then in some way or the other, you would label what the user is doing. So for example, he's turning right, or turning left and then agent has been trained on that data it's also leveraging certain you know pre-trained models and then it's also taking into consideration the new data that you're feeding to the model and there is this SEMA agent that is built which is then sent to in or which is then sent inside of the game for human-based evaluation at least at this point of time so you can see they've used like four research environments including a new environment they themselves built called the construction lab where the agent needed to build sculptures from, from building blocks which test their object manipulation and intuitive understanding of physical world. By learning different games, SEMA captures how language ties in gameplay behavior. So again, this is basically talking about the research environments that the user was in. It all, they also created like a custom environment where the agent had to do certain tasks. It's basically telling us how the data set was prepared and the evaluation was done. Let's take a look at the technical report here to see if there's something interesting we can find. Basically talks about the exact same thing. Then there is the approach here. It took the environment, commercial video games, and then these are the games uh, that it took. Description for each of the games here. Then the research environment. So there was a construction lab where agent needs to build novel items and sculptures from interconnecting building blocks. This is exactly what I mentioned. They said they built something in Unity. I think this is it. It built Playhouse, Proctor, World Lab, and all of these you know, had some sort of task associated with it. Each of the games had its own task and agent learned how to do all of these tasks by categorizing them in different categories, say construction, which is attaching an object. And then then food, which is eat, cook or cut, right? And then there's the data set, like I mentioned. So there's the visual input, just like a user would have. And then there is the agent, which would then do the action based on the environment. Again, there would be visual input. The agent would then look at the environment and then perform the relevant action based on the, obviously based on the user input. These are some of the actions here. So go to spaceship and you can see frame by frame, they've shown how the 
agent goes to the spaceship, drives the car, goes through the gate and so on. Again, you can go through this whole technical documentation if you're interested in learning more about this. I personally feel this is good progress, at least from the standpoint of training these agents. I don't see a real use case, but I mean, in a scenario where if it can be generalized to controlling drones, because effectively how you would control drone is by, you know, using a joystick. If you're able to generalize that to controlling drones or rovers on some sorts, then maybe this has real use cases. So imagine like sending a rover to space and you don't have to, you know, worry about controlling it from ground. It can automatically just, you know, decide what is what and do research on its own. So I think these are some of the interesting use cases. And again, like most of the things by Google, this is again a paper. So I don't know when this will become something that we will be able to play with. But anyways, this is an interesting development by their DeepMind team. Really excited to see what happens next.